holy baptism is found in the Red Book of Common Prayer, page 299. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have the grace and the power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading from Holy Scripture. a reading from 2 Samuel. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went to Baal Judah to bring up there the ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the ark of God on a new cart and brought it to the house of Abinabad, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinabad, were driving the new cart for the Ark of God. And Ahio went in front of the Ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed, Adam, to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sanctified an ox and a fatling. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, son or daughter of Saul, looked out the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. And when David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins, that all the people went back to their homes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this Sunday is Psalm 24. It's printed in your Sunday bulletin. Let us stand and say it together. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. The world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who planted it upon the seas, and made it firm upon the rivers of the deep, who can ascend the hill of the Lord, and who can stand in his holy place. Those who have clean hands and pure heart, who have not pledged themselves to falsehood, nor sworn by what is a fraud, but they shall receive the blessing of the Lord, and the just reward of the God. Thank you. 
Lift up your hands, O ye. Lift them high and the last of the doors, and the King of Glory shall come in. Who is he who is the King of Glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of Glory. Please be seated now for the reading of the epistle. The letter to Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the richness of his grace that he has lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Let us now stand together and sing the sequence hymn 375.
our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pour into St. John, glory to you, Lord Christ. King Herod heard of the demons cast out and the many who were anointed and cured for Jesus' name had become known. And some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead. And for this reason, these powers are working him. But others said, it is the prophet Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when King Herod heard it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John and bound him and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and his officers and for the leaders of Galilee. And when his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask me, I will give you even half my kingdom. Well, she went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? And her mother replied, the head of John the baptizer. And immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the baptizer on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oath and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. And immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. And he went and beheaded John in the prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. And when John's disciples heard about this, they came and they took his body and they laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Dear God, cleanse our hearts from our violence and from our ways and from our grudges and from all the stuff we hold inside and free us. Free us to be the people you have baptized in your Holy Spirit, to be agents of your love. Amen. Please be seated. So I've been away for a couple of weeks on national church business, and I had nothing, nothing to do with choosing those readings, all right? <laughs> I got to go back to a national church reading and tell them to do something about this. But, I, but the reading that you just heard from St. Mark's Gospel, it's, it is, it's one of the more grisly accounts that you're ever going to encounter, and especially on a beautiful summer Sunday morning in New England. Unless we get back down, far down in the details of John the Baptizer's beheading of the, king, the you know, command of a corrupt king who made a drunken promise to a dancing girl. I mean, really, who needs this stuff? You can get it on your cable TV on demand, right? And you can get it for free on the nightly news. We don't need that kind of focus, and certainly God does not need that either. The good news, though, in that appointed gospel reading was the very last line. Despite what the world and the king dished out to that faithful servant of God, John, people of faith did not run. People of faith persevered and kept doing right. As the scripture said, when John's disciples heard what had happened, they came from his body, right to the court of the king, and they gave the man a decent burial. God and God's 
faithful people are not scared off by the likes of the King Herods of this world, either you know, centuries ago or of this world in our time. God's faithful ones persevere in doing good and loving things. They trust in the goodness and in the power of God to see them through. And speaking of such good things, we are about this morning to entrust the wonderful souls uh, of uh, two little ones, one of whom is playing with her toes in the front row right now, Miss, Mr. Noah Curtis and Miss Tallulah. And, uh, and, you know, we're going to entrust them to God's unfailing love and care through holy baptism. Their parents and their godparents and all of us in this place right now, in this community of faith, we're going to, sh we're going to promise, we're going to vow to share our faith with these children, to encourage them to love God and their neighbor, and to learn how to love themselves and to strive for justice and peace in this world uh, and to respect the dignity of every human being, of all God's children. These are the holy promises that we are asked to live in into ourselves and to live by as best we know how every day of our lives. It's a tall order for sure, but it's a high and a noble calling. And we are just the people that God has invited hmm, into this noble affair, this wonderful experiment of faith in this world. And God's promise, well, God's promise is to be a constant companion to these children all the way, every step of the way in their lives and every misstep of the way in their lives, a constant companion. God is there for them. God is here for you as well to be our guide, to be our inspiration, to be our source of forgiveness and, and life-affirming compass inside, a compass so we find our way in this world and toward the next. Uh, I pray that we will keep our promises to these children, and I know that God will keep God's promises to us. But the bigger question arises, what does it mean? What does it possibly mean to be baptized into the household of God in the 21st century? Well, to answer in part on a warm summer Sunday, uh, I'm going to uh, briefly take you back to the Episcopal faith tradition of the 18th century, to the 1700s in the newborn United States. I know, who wants to go to the 1700s? Well, you don't know why. In this newborn United States, 1700s, when the nation and this church were first constituted, do you know that two-thirds of the signers of the Declaration of Independence were Anglicans, were Episcopalians? Two-thirds. And they had much to do with how we frame the, the governance of this church. Uh, it's a very good thing. And about that same time, the Church of England here in the colonies was about to become the Episcopal Church in this new land. Another king left behind in favor of this growing love of Christ in a new place. So long, King George, they said. And uh, our first presiding bishop, the very first presiding bishop of this church, yes, I have... <laughs> I'm telling you, he's quite a guy. His name was Bishop William White. He was also the first chaplain to the Continental Congress. William White helped set, the, helped set this church in a new way by insisting that regular people, lay people, you all guys, huh? Not just the bishops had a say in the governance of the church. That's important. That was a new and very progressive twist in ecclesiastical affairs uh, of the time. He also set up schools in that time for Native American children and for the children of slaves, black children. So, you know, this was another thing we've been talking about at my general convention uh, two weeks ago, that black lives matter. You shouldn't even have to say it. But William White was saying it in the 1700s when this church was born, and we need to say this more and more and work more and more on racial reconciliation. So this is matter forever in this church. This, uh, this was a, a, a radical idea to educate marginalized kids or any kids hmm, publicly 
in the 1700s. Bishop White then went on to ordain the first black clergyman of this church in this land, Reverend Absalom Jones, in 1795. This was far, far ahead of its time uh, in this land. And then this church, you know, it, we've always taken a lead position of service to the gospel first, before the king or, the, or anybody else, and in fulfillment of our baptismal promises to seek and serve Christ in all people and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Additionally, White set up a school for the deaf. And in the 1700s, he set up what is called the Magdalen Society. Mary Magdalen, you remember? You know, the one who really loved Jesus. Uh, it's a society for women in the 1700s. So they had a chance to reinvent themselves after being sorely mistreated by this world and or who had made some very regrettable decisions earlier in life. He knew, and our church has always known, that God's not finished with us yet. There's always a way, and always a way for redemption and transformation. So so our first, very first presiding bishop was no slouch, old William White. He was a living example of what can be accomplished when we call on God to help us reshape the world and ourselves by God's blueprint when we declare and give ourselves over to serving the people around us the way Christ would serve the people around us. It was that way back then, and we will vow to do this in this very hour. Now, Sarah Ambrosi, your fellow parishioner and lay leader, she's sitting right way in the back row. She had, she, she had the great honor of sitting with me and I with her for, what, 13 straight days in, in Salt Lake City. We've been away at, at the 78th General Convention to the Episcopal Church. It happens every three years in a different city. And the image of William White, who presided at the first General Convention 230 years ago, this was sort of a party gift, except, well, let's just say I horked it, all right? They left it laying around and I took him home with us, all right? <laughs> Forgive me, all right? <laughs> but it was a, a gift to remind and inspire all of us to partner with God when we come home, to partner with God in our community, to partner with God in your heart of hearts, mm -hmm. in your times of challenge, absolutely, but also on occasions of life's joys and triumphs. The spirit of this, uh, of this church continues well. And I'm happy to just tell you very, very briefly that at the 78th General Convention, among many other things, uh, in fact, over 350 resolutions, we, we, um, well, we upheld racial reconciliation as a priority for our land. We just also set up more resources for small churches to encourage our people to, um, to see life as a lifelong spiritual formation process we voted to reduce, you'll love this, the percentage of money required by the national church so that we can invest more and more in our people and in our communities closer to home. That was a biggie. We committed to abolishing the death penalty in the 32 states where it's still being used in the United States. The whole church committed to this. And we will also commit to advocating for safer, more responsible approaches to gun ownership in this land. We're losing 80 people a day and 10 of them are kids. We need a better approach, my friends. We also, uh, as our uh, brand new presiding bishop said last week, we're going to be brand new presiding bishop. Wait till you hear this guy. He's great. He said, we're going to be more and more the, not only the church where everybody can feel absolutely welcome to come in and find God, but we're going to be the church that, the, well, I can't even begin. He, he would do this. We're going to be the church well, it takes the love of God out to where the people really live, he said. And, and you should hear that man preach. It's amazing. You know, when people, everybody yearns for the love of God. We don't keep it bottled up in here. Our baptismal promises, they, they invite us, they compel us to go forth as, as agents of love and kindness. Indeed, the disciples of John the Baptist, they weren't scared off by the tactics of the king 21 centuries ago. In fact, Great help was on the way, was it not? In the way of Jesus Christ, God sends God's Son to take up where John had just scratched the surface, and now it's your time. Now it is our time to delight in God's will. It's your turn to, to walk in God's ways. Like William White, and so many over time, powered by the spirit of baptism to the glory of God, 
for the love of one's neighbor, for the sake of all our children. Now, Miss Tallulah is definitely ready for baptism. <laughs> and I thought I heard a chirp over here a minute ago from Noah, too. So, would the parents and godparents of these little ones please come forward with your prayer books? Open to page 301. Will the people please open to page 301? for 
our presiding bishop chaplain, and my boy, presiding bishop elect, and from Rob, our bishop, we ask prayers for those who have asked for healing and encouragement today, for John and Leo, for Alice and Frank and Judy and Sue, for Jeff, for Sean and for Gladys. And we give thanksgiving for the baptisms of Noah and Kalula. And for those notables in the parish, and we have a good son, Judy Shepherd, Diane Dusick, and Paul Peterson, for Andrew McCarthy, Leanne Miller, Brendan Bergenau, Betty LaFleur, and Joe Paramba. And we celebrate this week the anniversary of Susan and Jeff Osborne, for John and Lee Sherwood, for Randy and Pam Payne, for Ann and Michael Darney, and on the 40th anniversary, Jane and Bill Extra. <laughs> I'm celebrating. <laughs> Lord, hear that prayer. We also have special intentions for blessing and grace for those who are traveling around the city and visiting today. As well as what we're doing on Red, we're going to look today at Andrew Paul Beck, Oliver Winston, Elizabeth Chamberlain, Richard St. Delay, Craig Keever. And those in our hearts today, and those who dwell in the near presence of God. Grant the Lord that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ may live in the power of his resurrection, and look for him to come again in glory, who live and reign now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. We give us good thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation, and through it, we led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt and into a land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into our lasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. And through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into the fellowship of those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And now, sanctify this water, we pray, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here, friends, and born anew, may continue for a heavenly religious life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Who is first? No one's napping. <laughs> no one's trying to baptize you in the name of God the Father, the Creator, of God the Son, the Redeemer. God the Holy Spirit, your sustainer. Amen. So I'm John, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, and you are marked as Christ's home forever. Amen. <laughs> Bye. 
about to take 300 days, let us walk him to be baptized by saying together, we receive the of the of God, and the of Christ crucified, his resurrection, and he shared with us in the eternal priesthood. May the peace of the Lord be always with you.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Let us now join together in the great thanksgiving. The Eucharistic prayer is on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ our Lord you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. The people may kneel or be seated as you are comfortable. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with Noah, John, and Tallulah, Dorothy, and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask to your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia!
service of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ gives himself for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.
the post-communion prayer is found at the top of page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 366. And let us pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. These holy mysteries that we are the members of the body of your Son and there is of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now go forth into the world in peace. Be strong and of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good, rejoicing in the power of God's Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. The recessional is hymn 440. Thank you.